your CV is your entry ticket into a potential interview. It's both your professional introduction and the asset of your application that gets you in the door with an employer. I'm Jen, a career coach at Indeed. In this video, I'm going to explain the ins and outs of a CV or curriculum vitae and give you an in-depth guide to formatting and structuring your CV, as well as the best approach for each section. Make sure to stick around until the end where I'll give you some quick advice on how to tailor your CV to maximize its impact with each employer. So what are the key differences between a CV and a resume? In the US, the major difference between a CV and a traditional resume is length and format. Both serve as a job application document, but while a resume is a brief one-page asset that only includes the most relevant information about your career, a CV can be two to three pages and aims to emphasize the depth of your academic and work experience. As a result, a CV often includes sections that you won't find in resumes, like awards and honors, professional associations, scholarships, grants, and publications. In the US, CVs are typically requested for job applicants in education, science, or research. Unless an employer specifically asks you for a CV, or you work in a field where you know CVs are standard, it's best to submit a resume over a CV. Outside of the US, it is more common for employers to ask job seekers for a CV or to use the term interchangeably with resume but both refer to a professional document that's similar to the US version of a resume. It's just slightly more lengthy. The tips I'll share today focus on the US CV lens, but are adaptable for both purposes. Next up, I'll dive into how to create a winning CV, but if you've watched this far, please take a second to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell. Step one, conduct company research to develop your angle. Conducting company research is a critical part of creating your CV and it's something you should do with every job application you submit. Now, this isn't necessarily intuitive. After all, your experience doesn't change from one job application to another. So why would company research impact your CV? Well, company research is critical to developing your angle or your strategy for appealing to this specific employer. Your angle is based on what you have to offer and how you can best present that to an employer, given their unique needs. All of that is to say, of course your own experience doesn't change, but what you include, what you emphasize, and how you describe things can and should. If you don't conduct this research, all you're doing is trying to market yourself to a generic audience, which rarely succeeds. So what's the best way to research? Take a three-pronged approach. Start small by looking at the job description. What skills and qualifications are they looking for? This will most directly inform what you choose to put on your resume. Then research the company based on its own website, social media, third-party news, and any personal connection you may have with it. Think about how the company describes itself and its goals, plus how you could support the mission. Finally, consider the big picture of the industry. How is this company tracking within its field? What are its strengths and weaknesses? And what unique perspective can you bring to help the company's trajectory? Step two, create a clear and consistent format. As for clarity, there's no need for colorful fonts, graphics, photos, or even more than two font styles or sizes. Instead, stick to one font and do something to distinguish your headings, whether it's increasing size, bolding, or all of the above. In regards to consistency, everyone knows to proofread for spelling or grammar errors, but make sure that you're looking for formatting deviations. Are you adding punctuation after each bullet point? Are you bolding the names of each employer? Is your spacing a certain way for your dates? Now, there's no right answer here, but what's important is to make one decision and stick to it in every case. These inconsistencies easily slip by us when we're looking for content errors, but they can jump off the page as unprofessional when new eyes first look at a CV. Step three, structure your CV to make your accomplishments shine. Before I get into this, I do want to say that there's no one right way to do a CV. I'm going to provide a format that's standard for the academic, scientific, and research-focused use of the CV that's common in the US. But if you're watching this from elsewhere, or you've been asked for a CV that's for a job that's not in one of these fields, know that this format is flexible and should be changed based on your situation. The goal in all cases is to highlight what's most relevant to the job at hand, and that may involve exclusion, adding, or reordering certain sections. As we go through each component of the CV, I'll provide some tips on how to best approach each section along the way. Header and contact information. At the top of a CV, you'll always begin with your full name and contact information. Make sure that your name is big enough to catch the recruiter's attention and your contact information includes your phone number, email, and the city of residence. Now, note that it's not wise to include your street address for privacy reasons. And also, if you have a professional profile, website, or portfolio, go ahead and provide a shortened link here. Professional summary. 
The standard length of a professional summary varies based on country and industry, but in the US, it's typically two to three sentences or a really short paragraph. When writing a professional summary, ask yourself, if the employer to read nothing else about my application, what are the most important things they should know about me? Then concisely and persuasively share your key accomplishments. It also never hurts to end by explaining how you're the best position to help this company meet its goals. For more specific information on how to write a professional summary, check out this video right here. Education. We're covering education first over work experience because in the US, it's standard for CVs to focus more on the educational background. But if you're watching from somewhere else in the world, list the section that's most relevant to your application, and that very well may be your work experience. With your education section, list all of your degree granting institutions, as well as any thesis titles or highly relevant coursework. You can also list any continuing education programs or professional certificates. And note here, if you're worried about age bias, there's no need to include graduation dates in this section. Here's an optional section, honors and awards. If you have many academic honors and awards to include, you can add that in a separate section underneath education and include any relevant awards going back to undergrad. Provide the award name and date received. And scholarships can be included here too. No descriptions are necessary. The section is standard for academic applications. Professional experience. In the next section, you should add your professional history. Use reverse chronological order to place your most recent work experience first. Include your company, position title, time of employment, and at least three detailed bullet points describing your responsibilities and impact. Generally, I kept bullet points off at five max and use that only for the most recent or current employer, but the CV does have the ability to be long enough to fit the content. So use your best discretion on what's necessary and what's excessive. For academia, it's standard to only list academic related work experience and to include research history in its own section below work history. For all other fields, feel free to draw from any relevant past history, including internships and part-time work. Here's a pro tip. To write a great bullet point, start with a strong action verb, like drove, developed, or acquired, and describe what you did, and then look for ways to show impact by either adding numbers or tying it to a business goal. Publications and presentations. If relevant to the role, list all the publications or presentations in order of their publication date and know that it's acceptable to include anything that's pending. They don't have to be long works, but they should be worth talking about if you're asked. Added qualifications or skills. It's best here to list five skills that prepare you for success for this particular role. Prioritize hard skills, specifically the skills that enable you to perform a task needed for the job, like coding or language fluency. And note, if you're applying for a highly technical role, Move this below your professional profile so that the recruiter can easily identify that you're able to perform the key functions of the job. For more information on how to approach skills on the job application, check out this video right here. Additional sections. In these sections, a job seeker can tailor their experiences for the position, company, and industry they're striving towards. Additional sections might include professional affiliations, volunteer experience, interests, or any other relevant professional experience that you want to include. However, just remember that the goal here is to support, not obscure the best parts of your professional offerings. So make sure you have a real reason for including one of these additional sections. Now that we know how to approach each section, I'll share the extra tip I promised at the beginning, how to maximize the overall impact of your CV. Step four, tailor your CV to appeal to two key audiences. Audience one, eliminators. Whether it's an HR representative, external recruiter, or applicant tracking system, the first reviewer of your resume has one primary aim, to sift through the high volume of potential hires and make a large baseline cut of candidates that aren't qualified. The goal here is to make it as easy as possible for them to see that you fully meet the requirements of the role and should not be eliminated, especially if the role is being reviewed by an applicant tracking system or a software that employers use for high volume online hiring. Consider including potential keywords based on the job's needs that the eliminator is scanning for. Review the job description for any relevant keywords they may be looking for. These tend to be drawn from the skills and the preferred or required qualification sections. Then use that exact wording on your application to describe any of those same skills that you have. The less they have to think about if you have the needed qualifications, the better. Audience two, selectors. Your CV also has to impress a more discerning audience the hiring manager. 
While eliminators are looking for a reason to say no, hiring managers are selectors, and they're looking for a reason to say yes to you over everyone else. So you need to appeal to the human mind and heart. To make your best case, you need to explain to them why you and your offering would be the best for the company. Consider your professional summary, the phrasing of your bullet points, and every other aspect of your CV as an opportunity to do so. And this ties back to the tip about company research and your angle. If you don't take these steps, you're simply explaining what you've done in the past without making it clear why you're the best person for this future role. Now that was a lot of information, so let's go over what we've covered on how to write a CV. We now know that in the US, a CV is longer, more detailed, and more academically focused than a resume. To write a great one, take the following steps. One, conduct company research to develop your angle. Think about how to position your offering as a solution for the company's needs. Two, create a clear and consistent format. Be sure to look out for formatting deviations when you proofread. Three, use our recommended structure, but adapt as needed for your circumstances. Remember the goal is to make your accomplishments shine for the role at hand. Four, tailor your resume to two key audiences. Escape the eliminator by adding obvious keywords and impress the selector by weaving a compelling angle into all aspects of your CV. Now, if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. For more CV and resume tips, I recommend checking out this playlist right here. And for advice on how to write a winning resume, be sure to check out this video. Best of luck, and we'll see you in the next video.